All right, so let's spend some time talking about the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula can be used to solve any quadratic equation, uh, but we mainly use it for problems where none of the other simpler methods that we've learned are working. Right, we have the square root method available, but that only works when that middle bx term is there. Right, When this one's missing, we're allowed to use the square root method. We also have the factoring method, uh, but not everything's factorable. It could have some strange decimals or fractions or, or things like that in it, and, and they're not easily factorable. So this quadratic formula is, is a nice backup plan. It works for everything, right? So if you take a look inside the box, this is the quadratic formula. It's got lots of A's and B's and C's in it, right? And here's what they mean, right? So I, I would take time, write down this quadratic formula. Again, pause the video if you need to, uh, and it's something that you're going to want to have committed to memory, uh, and it's something that you're going to use a lot throughout your entire high school career, so it's a really important idea that you understand how to use it and that you also have it committed to memory. Okay, so if you notice in my standard form here, I have ax squared plus bx plus c. Well, this is the a and the b and the c that are showing up in the quadratic formula. Okay, so we're just going to take the value in front of x squared, and in the spots that I have a, I'm going to replace that with that value, that coefficient. In the, in the middle spot where I have x to the first, I have a couple of b values in my quadratic formula. And then the constant term, I also have a c value at the end here. All right, so we're just going to plug those values in, and we're going to simplify that entire big expression and come up with some numbers, and those will be the solutions to the quadratic equation. Okay, One more important point before we look at one. Uh, in red letters here, I have something that's really important about the quadratic formula. It has to be set equal to 0 uh, before you start plugging in values. If it's set equal to anything else, you have to set it equal to 0 first, and then you'll be able to... Uh, use the quadratic formula. Okay, so here's an example. I have the quadratic formula at the top, and again, something that you're going to want to eventually know, right? And so if I'm looking at this and I'm asking you to solve this, I'm going to check it is set equal to zero, so I can start with the quadratic formula. And I'm going to say that makes this my a value, x to the first has my b value, and my constant term is negative five sitting there by itself. So I'm going to go to this formula and I'm going to fill in my b's with a three, my a's with a two, and my c value, my lone c value with a negative 5. Okay? This negative 4 that's up here is just always in the uh, equation. It's always in the quadratic formula. Uh, so that's not coming from this at all. It's just going to show up in the problem because it's in the quadratic formula itself. Okay? So I'm going to say x equals, and I'm just going to start filling in values. I'm going to say negative 3. This is a plus or minus symbol. We've seen that, and I'll show you what that means for us. Okay? And underneath the radical, I have b squared, which is 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times, again, negative 5. Don't forget the negative sign when you plug in C. And it's all over 2 times 2, because, again, my A value is 2. Okay, So that's the plug-in step. I would, I would definitely do that step every single time until you're comfortable with this. And now what I'm going to do, and again, what I would suggest you do, is take the time to simplify just underneath the radical. So if I were to go to my calculator, I'm just going to type in 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 5. Notice I didn't do the square root. I'm just making it as simple as I can. That's what b squared minus 4ac turns into. And so in one step, it's going to look like plus or minus. Instead of all that underneath the radical, I can say, well, that's just equal to 49. Okay. And the bottom, you can also simplify. 2 times 2, you know, is 4. Okay. So this is nice because the square root of 49 is something we can simplify even further. We can say this is the same as negative 3 plus or minus, and four, square root of 49 is 7 all over 4. Okay? So now we're at the step where we've simplified the radical as much as we've could. We've replaced it, the, the square root of 49 with what it equals, and now we're going to split this up into two problems. So here's where that plus or minus comes in. Negative 3 plus 7 over 4, that's 1. Okay? Negative 3 plus 7 over 4. And then I'm going to write a separate one, negative 3 minus 7 over 4. All right, and so I'm going to actually get two answers out of this, and we should, because if you remember in all of these quadratics, we've been getting two answers. So if I simplify this first one, negative 3 plus 7, well, that's 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. Okay? And out of the second one, negative 3 minus 7, well, that's negative 10 over 4, which I can simplify down to negative 5 halves, or if you want to say negative 2.5, and that'll accomplish the same thing. Okay? So I'm going to say these are my answers. I have x equals 1 x equals negative 5 over 2, and those are the answers that I would get from the quadratic formula. All right, so again, it, it's very intimidating at the beginning when you're first starting off using it, but you see in one step after I substitute, it turns into something a little bit more manageable, and then you see it really just turns into a couple of fractions that I can then simplify.